That demands that we stand there and take it, regardless of what's going on around us. And you know, the, the next requirement that we make is that we do it with joy. Paul said, I've learned that when I pray for you, that God fills my heart with joy. That's not any kind of happiness that he's talking about. That word means that, that I know that God is with me, and I know that God is supporting me, and I know that you're worth fighting for, and I know that, that we're going to come out of this together because I know that God has already started a work in you, and he's going to finish it. That this is the, the reason for, for this whole thing, that, that there's nothing impossible with him. And then he said, it's only right that I feel this way about you. I have, I have the right credential. I have the, the approval. I have the, the badge that, that makes it possible for me to do this because I have you in my heart that you are such great folks, that God has done such wonderful things in your life, and that he's still working in your life. A number of years ago, I heard a man who was leading a, a Bible conference in Long Beach, and he said, be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. You've been there. You know what I'm talking about. And when we, when we think about God at work within us, it makes it a thrill to stand a test and stand strong in spite of the problems that are around us. And then he said, you know that I long for you. I love fellowship with you. I love being with you. I like to be near you. You know that I long for you with a tender kind of love. And I'm praying that you will in your lives approve the better things. We're not talking about luxuries. We're talking about character qualities that will endure through eternity. I sat on the driveway of our modest home where my parents lived. My father had died. My brother and I were sitting on the old uh, uh, pavement, the old pavement. It was getting pretty crumbly by that time. Looking at his tools, we had them spread out on the tarp. And we were sitting there talking about things we remembered things my mom wanted to dispose of and wanted us to take. So we were separating some of those things. And I sat back and thought, is this all there is to him? It is, are these little things that he's used, that he's, his hands have handled, is this all there is? And then we would begin to remember and recall what wonderful days we had had with our dad. We remembered in the little fourth time church when he was teaching the young men's Bible class and, and, and leading the singing in that church. We remembered when uh, he went with uh, my namesake from a larger church where we were members for a while out to Woden to a schoolhouse to have a Sunday afternoon service. We remembered the good things. Now, there were some things that were not so good, but we remembered those good things, and we realized that there was a great deal more to life than the stuff. Sometimes we get hung up on all the stuff, don't we? That we think that's important, that we think that's, that's vital to what life is all about. But Paul is saying, I'm praying that your love will grow in knowledge, and in understanding. Now, how can love grow in knowledge? How can love grow in understanding? 
He said, the real kind of love will grow, and you'll come to comprehend what's really important. I'm praying that you will deal with that and that you will come to know it. So you will prove better things. And then he makes an interesting little insert. Harming no one. Don't you think the evangelist apostle was deeply concerned about that element in the church? That whatever you do, you don't destroy someone else. Whatever you do, you don't wreck somebody else's life. Whatever you do, don't harm someone else. As you grow in love and understanding, it will make it possible for you to be without offense that you will not do that which is, destroys other people. Since Jesus Christ has filled your life with righteous works, we're part of the same thing. Whether leaders that consider themselves bond slaves or servants, are people who continue to undergird and strengthen the work and support the gospel of Jesus Christ. One of the best soul winners, and you forgive me for using an old term, uh, we don't hear that much anymore, I understand. But one of the best people that I've ever known to share Jesus Christ in a personal way with others was not a preacher. He was not a traveling evangelist. He was a lady. His education had been limited, but he knew his Bible and he loved the Lord. And he talked to people often about their relationship with Jesus Christ. And every opportunity he had, he would share his faith in the living Christ. I believe that that's your business and my business, don't you? I think that's where what we need to be doing all the time. Amen. I think that unless we have grown to that point, that something is still missing, and God is still striving within us to give us up to part of the speed. Paul was saying, we leaders are not much because we're still slaves. You people are not much because the Lord isn't finished. He's still working inside you. That real Christianity is not the outward display. Real Christianity is letting Jesus Christ do his work in your heart. And every day that we live, every opportunity that we have, every crisis that we face, the Lord wants us fortified so that we'll react well, that we'll do what he wants us to do. That's my introduction. Now here's my sermon. God wants to do a great work within every one of you. I'm convinced that you have the capability. I'm convinced that you have the desire. I'm convinced that you want God to be active in your life every day. Let's stop hurting each other. And let's reinforce each other. Let's do God's work without offense. Let's build a great heart and a great congregation and a great ability to reach out to the world that's lost. Because there's a lot of desperation out there. We know because we've come through some of it, right? Amen. 
God has benefited us tremendously and given us strength that we didn't know we had. And he can lead us to be leaders of others. And that's what he wants to do. I want to give you an opportunity now to respond to the leadership of the Lord Jesus and do what he wants to do in your heart. If you're willing, if you're committed, if you trust only Jesus Christ and his righteousness, if you believe that, that he's already paid the whole price, that's the beginning. Amen. That's not the end. Well, maybe it is the end. It's the beginning end. But we've got a long way to go, right? This is what I'd like for us to impart to all of us this morning. Every person is valuable. The Bible said that God notices when the sparrow falls. And then our Lord said, you're worth more than many sparrows. And you consider that a great compliment? Well, perhaps you shouldn't. There's sparrows everywhere. I don't know anywhere in America that we don't have sparrows, right? I think they're just everywhere. They just crop up. They show up as soon as uh, the snow falls. And they're everywhere. But Jesus said, I know about the sparrows. And you're worth more than sparrows. By every hair on your head is known. I've got a count. I wonder if the Lord noticed my hairbrush this morning. <laughs> and some of that hair is not on top like it used to be. Many cancer patients lose their hair. Our, our daughter experienced this a few years ago. It was devastating to her until a friend of her took her down to the shop and they found a wig that worked fairly well. And she wore the wig for a while until her hair came back. We, we understand this, that the Lord said, you are valuable. Everything about you is important. Let me lead you to a quality kind of life that will make all your days and years to come a joy. Because you see, joy and happiness are not the same thing. Joy is that which bubbles up from the inside because God is there and he works in our life. If you're willing to do this, if you're willing to let God lead you draw you into his fellowship and make of you more than you ever thought you could be. This is the time to say, yes, I will. We're going to stand in a moment and sing of him an opportunity and invitation. Todd's going to lead us. And while we do this, would you make a clear decision for Christ this morning? Maybe you never have before. Maybe you've never trusted him as your Savior, but you know that you need him. When you come trusting him as your Lord and Savior, if you are a Christian, but you've lacked the ability or you've had too much fear or there's some, something holding you back or you're too in love with your stuff to turn it loose and say, Lord, I'll trust you completely to into a life of victory. You come. Let God lead you to do His will while we stand together and while we sit.
know the biggest word in that line? A-L-L. -L. The problem that we most, mostly have is surrendering everything. You say, God, I'll give you up to a point. I'll draw my line. But what he requires is that we give you everything. And when we do, then the little disagreements that may have cropped up become unimportant. If I had a voice this morning, I might just break out in song and sing. You remember that, uh, that song, It Will Be Worth It All When We See Jesus? It will be. It will be okay. And the victories that we've won as we've come along the way, I'm going to introduce some folks to you in a minute because they've come to be a part of us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You like that stuff? Amen. I do. And as we, as we share together in the future, God wants to do some great things in our hearts and collectively as a body. Just be seated for a moment and give us a moment to get things together. seen nodding heads and maybe you haven't heard what has been said. I, I've always wished that every church member could stand in a spot like this and talk to folks when they come. <laughs> this, this, is, this is fun. This is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and uh, and this, these people have come and, and are submitting themselves to uh, uh, follow the Lord Jesus in baptism and show their their dedication to him uh, in that way. And I wonder if there's a motion to accept them after baptism in the fellowship. Motion back here, second over here. Those who favor uh, say yes will say yes. Amen. Those who are opposed, no. I don't see it. All right, all right. That's great. It's so wonderful to have you. I know you've been thinking about this for some time, right? Uh, we've been uh, giving it a great deal of thought. And we'll want to get better acquainted with you and we'll plan pretty soon to, uh, to have a baptismal service. And we'll look forward to that. Uh, thank you, Art. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for having us. I want you to come by uh, and, and uh, meet these folks if you do not know them. Many of you already do know them. And uh, that's a good thing. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll welcome them potentially, and then we'll welcome them officially when they become uh, baptized Christians uh, in the fellowship of the church. All right? Amen. Thank you.
All right. All of you, would you, would you just stand here and, uh, and let people welcome you here? So glad to have you come. church, future members coming to know you, Lord. You first loved us before we loved you. You first forgave us before we could forgive ourselves or each other. It has been said we're supposed to forgive seven times seventy-seven, Father. We pray to you that our congregation can forgive each other and continue on with our lives as you would have it. Jesus name. 